A lot of people all over Ethiopia define themselves through two books, Bible and the Quran. They base their whole life on it. I was apprehensive. First time I went down there, I had a lot of people telling me that I was going on to Holy Land and talking about medicine was not going to be something that was going to be taken kindly. The challenge that we initially experienced was the fact that folks felt like in order to be respectful to their faith, they had to completely be dependent on just the healing power of a religion. And they were under the impression that Western medicine would be something that would be contradictory to the actual practice of religion. We believed it was forbidden to take the medicine and the holy water at the same time. I had to go look for somebody of authority and knew what they were talking about when it came to religion. I know my people are very devout to their religion, so whenever something comes to them, unless they are being informed by the clergy people, uh, they will be hesitant to do so. The offer we put in front of him was the patient or the the follower does not have to make a choice. They can do both. Could you endorse us in getting this message out? I told them the holy water and the medicine are the same, and they never oppose to each other. The scientist who made the medicine, who created him, God, as far as I am concerned, they both came from the same God. Clergy has actually incorporated into their morning sermon that there's a hospital a kilometer and a half away from here that will give you free counseling and testing. If you require medicine, you get started on medicine for free. Now we get the benefits of the antiretroviral drugs and the blessings of the water. And it's directly saving life. Otherwise, all of these individuals would be dead. This is just the start. Every faith should be able to benefit from the medicine and the spiritual component of the religion and the healing power of their religion.